So there are these box sets that are a mix of really great movies and really terrible movies and I'm slowly working my way through them. So today I'm watching the 1989 film Laser Mission. I don't know the cast, I don't know the plot, I don't know anything like that. I love 80s movies so I'm excited for some potential cheesy 80s moments. With the title like Laser Mission, my only real prediction is that there will be sci-fi elements or lasers involved at the very least. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Brandon Lee is in this? Like, the crow Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son? I've only ever seen him in The Crow, but he was great in that. That's a great movie. He only knows where he is going to. Is this his own theme song? Like the back feet of a song. The I feel like this is not going to be great, but we'll see. Those aren't lasers. Measured at 526 carats. Oh my, that's a lot. Now, what better way to mark this festive occasion than to salute it with a bottle of champagne? Oh god! Oh, it's not a bottle of champagne at all! Oh my, trouble's already begun! Smoke bomb! Fun soundtrack so far. I almost didn't recognize him with the glasses, but yeah, that's Brandon Lee. No need to talk, just throws his passport. Management and conduct behavior modification. What does that mean? Dangerous work. Let's put it this way. I'll always have a job. <laughs> okay. I definitely getting low budget, and I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go. Brandon Lee was the only name I recognized in the intro, so. Oh, that saxophone, okay, going for it. You're fond of birds. <laughs> yes, I have in the Quite the conversationalist. seem to think that people want money. There are other things. I'm terrified to find out, yeah, what that means. He take his glasses off for these serious conversations. Freedom? Uh, Can't put a price tag on freedom, though. The Star Wars program grows, and I will make my contribution to destroy mankind. The Star Wars program? Is that what he said? Are you acquainted with theoretical physics? Not personally. Fire from heaven and melting men. Lasers. Oh, Q lasers. Who's this? <laughs> then I think we can talk. A second ago, he's like, oh, you're just gonna offer me money. I can be bought. You were right. Operation Professor. Fine. Fine. Oh, no, Professor. Oh, man down. People's court has found you guilty of crimes against humanity. I don't remember a trial. <laughs> what crimes did he commit? A present from the King of Belgium, 1907. Oh, a guillotine! They're not even going for hanging, going right for the old school. You should only be concerned about the more. Emotional rage of a dinner plate, this guy. Haha, <laughs> they're going to cut off your head. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? He was shot with a dart, and yet he's the one being arrested? What about the guys that shot him? What's happening? By design. Did they say what country this is? Key and key. <laughs> I just taunting him. Oh my god. <laughs> Went right for it. That guy's not getting up. Yeah. No one's getting out alive, man. Not with that gun. He's like, you'll never take me to the guillotine. Oh 
my god. He was in jail for espionage before, but now I feel like he's definitely gonna be in jail for murder. He's shooting everybody in sight. Look at these bodies everywhere. Oh. Oh, well. Oh my god, it cut so fast. Someone wanted to keep the rating uh, PG. I don't know. They cut right when he was about to get guillotined. I don't know why I expect you to understand. Fair enough. <laughs> Contact his daughter, Alyssa. Great, great conversation. Veterinary medicine. She's in Kuwana. And she's KGB. Now the KGB's involved? You know, you guys really know how to win friends and influence people. Isn't that a name of a book? Oh my gosh, going for the fake mustache. He's really committed to this character. Por favor. <laughs> Why did they just cut to this guy's drinking and him saying please? So bizarre. What do you just see? Who fell out of the tree? Wrong. Oh god. Oh, slapping. Oh my. What do you just see? What's the right answer? Nothing? Nada. There we go. There we go. Whose Jeep is that? How is with the Whose Jeep is that? What Jeep? That's the right answer, hmm? He's just setting them up to fail by asking them questions that he wants lies to. Attention! Very aggressive with these questions. What we gonna do without our Jeep? <laughs> It's, oh my god, they love slapping. They love their jeeps and they love to slap people. That's what they got going on. That would be the presidential suite. 1,000 kwanzas a night. Mm. It's like, money means nothing to me. Just be the Cuban government. <laughs> what? We are gone. Maybe you can make some money. None of these conversations make any sense. Just build the Cuban government. <laughs> What does this have to do with anything? It's so bizarre. Hey, let's have a quick segment to go to a reptile sanctuary. Um. Um. Oh my god, this disguise. He loves his disguises. Yeah, there hasn't been any lasers yet. I know they're on a mission to save this research professor who specializes in lasers, but I was hoping for some lasers by now. Space to Alpha One, come in, please. Colonel he just turns it off. He's like, forget you guys, I'm going back to playing my game. What a goof. You idiots, go to see the professor's apartment. Move! Quickly, come on, come on! So we were playing dice outside? Like, what? <laughs> Oh, okay. Parkour! This soundtrack is just like every stock 80s music they could find. It is! Oh, <laughs> yeah! Oh, God! Arriba, arriba! Oh, my gosh. That can't be good. Oh! Ow! Cheese and rice! I hope he didn't do his own stunts. Oh my gosh. I just dropped in to say, Bon Appetit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's my problem too if I help you. Did he discuss his work with you? No. We talked about... The art, culture, politics. <sighs> we. We're partners, remember? Oh. Am I worth 100,000 kwanzas too? Oh my. I never put price tags on women. It's much more fun taking them off. <coughs> Barf. You try. Sorry. In the violence of the night. They've definitely played this song like seven times, so I don't care. Just look at these bodies in like broad daylight. Just the body count's got to be at like 50 by now. If they, you know, use lasers instead of bullets, this would be way more fun. Yeah. Oh, whoa! Extreme stunts. Whoa! Slow-mo car flip and then a completely separate shot of an explosion. Insane. 
insane. Oh my god. Just total destruction. Wherever they filmed, there was no way they can go back. They definitely destroyed things they weren't supposed to. <laughs> She's just not even paying attention. Like, where are they going? Like, what's the... Oh, another car door! One wasn't bad enough. You know, you want to whip around and get the other side. Oh, oh! The explosion definitely went off before they went through it, but just so ridiculous. Un momento, señorita. World's longest car chase sequence that goes nowhere. Nice Or as long as saxophone solo also keep us going throughout this entire sequence. Very long story. Well, we got nothing but time. This is you driving for the rest of the movie? Like, come on. Tell me this very long story. Well, I don't want to write one, so I'm just going to say it's a long story. So. Oh, God, that's what he wanted to show him? That's horrifying. Just this wall of heads in jars? Think of this room. Are like display cases? In it. Oh my god. Oh! What the frick is that? He's like, come with me real quick. I want to show you my room of torture. Ugh. Nothing in this movie makes sense, but it's hilarious. Oh, rocket launcher. Bye. Oh my god, man on fire! I was like, how did that not do anything? Oh god, oh well. How are they gonna walk out of there? That whole thing, oh my god, come on. Seriously, they went from driving the van to having it completely exploded and they walk away on scratch. Oh my heels. <laughs> They're gonna walk 400 miles. We're supposed to believe that? Come on. Through desert and something called like the skeleton coast, this very harsh landscape. Time for some brooding pensive moments and a guitar solo. You know, your sense of timing is terrible. <laughs> I didn't mean it as a man doll, I meant it as a meal. Well, you're now she's switching to cannibalism. Stupid questions, all right? And let me tell you something else, Buster. You're not my idea of a dream date, asshole. Were they on a date? Mr. Asshole, you. Oh, so witty. Hey, hey, my hands are empty. We come as friends, not foes. I saying? know you are. How do you know? News travels fast, even in the desert. Let's just drink a Jack Daniels right out of the bottle. Well, then you'll help us. If you just. Help us get to a civilized area. We'll sleep on that tonight. You're quite safe for now. We'll talk in the morning. He's like, I'm gonna continue drinking and maybe I'll, you know, return you and get the reward. And if not, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Oh, look at that, a cuddle puddle developed. Like, I'd rather watch the terrible action sequences than just these two walking 400 miles alone in the desert. And still no lasers! It's just that... I'm scared and, and I'm worried about the professor and... You mean your father, right? Yeah, my father. She always calls him the professor, though. I'm trying to apologize. What do you want me to do? Get down on my knees? That would be nice. Oh my, maybe she is a spy. Ah! <laughs> yeah, not going for the subtle and surprise entrance, was he? Why is she taking his bloody sword? Like, where did she put it? Where is it now? Come on. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, 
Such a loud scream. We get it, they're walking through the desert. We can't expect them to walk 400 miles. Come on. Think of better, have a better idea for a movie. Oh. <laughs> like, how do they find them? Like, they're literally in the middle of nowhere in this desert, but yet they're still being hunted. a trap oh bonked him oh bonked him <laughs> what if you walked somewhere else i feel like digging yourself into a pit in the sand and then waiting whoa let's all roll down the hill ba -ba 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 best fun ever like what if he walked like three feet away and you would be just trying to grab him oh my gosh he comes from little austria a place called swalk up ask anyone we're the United Nations of uh, every country's getting representation in this movie. Our luck was gonna change. <laughs> oh, bonked him. <laughs> she had a sword. Where'd the sword go? <laughs> Why this under horse crotch POV? Why do we need that? That's uncomfortable. Why this framing? Who thought that was a good idea? No. They're like, it's been at least 20 minutes since we played the song. We gotta bring it back. Bring it back. Cue the spicy music. Oh my god. I feel nothing. I feel less than nothing. Oh my god. Why just the zoom in on the eyes? It's like, I know we just walked 400 miles through the sweaty desert, but let's get sweaty together! Cheese and rice. This movie's like just cashing in all the things. Like, you don't have a story? Throw in a sex scene. You don't have a story? Throw in some explosions. You killed him? With pleasure. Why don't you head for Edcart's and I'll meet you back at the hotel. So she is an assassin? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you then. Listen. I love you too. Oh my gosh, really? What? Was I? So bad at my- Oh no, it was a trap! I suppose that's why we're here. The diamond and my skill have brought us all together. How were they connected? You see, with the Virbeck diamond and my laser, I can create a nuclear weapon. How? How? Come on. My knowledge invaluable to the because it's not real. Mr. Gold, at last we meet. I'd love to shake hands. <laughs> I think you know my partner, don't you? I heard you. There's no place like home. There's no place like home as he clicks his heels. This makes your continued cooperation essential. Take the girl to the mine and close up shop. Join you later. Sounds so spicy when he whips or whispers it like that. Trust is a very dangerous thing in a partnership. Take it. That's what's keeping this diamond secure. I knew you would appreciate that room. You mean the room where he has just heads on a wall? Oh my god, this room's also terrifying. <laughs> Oh my god! Every scene is solved with just aggressive fight sequences. Like, you know what? Let's take this fight up to the rooftop. I love the view. Oh! Ah, I think that were both of them. Oh god! <coughs> Oh, he landed on the fence. Oh, but that's cool. Somebody else came by. No need to, uh, on to the next thing. Oh, 
Oh, broke him over his knee like a twig. Ka-cha! I was like, I told you I was going to kill you and save the professor. Do you know where the mine is? I, I, I think so. It's like, you're going to need a hat for this adventure. Let's go. Don't want you getting heat stroke. I suppose your friend is Michael Gold. I suppose. <sighs> He's just throwing diamonds down her shirt. There's no way for a woman to act. I will take care of you. Oh, bonked him. Yeah, they're like, we're making our escape. Come on, Medwell. <laughs> She's like, all right, I'll quickly turn around and shoot you, and then I'm off. Your sense of timing. These one-liners are terrible. I'll take care of our little Russian friend here. It's like, I know I've been shot in the stomach, but let me, you know, let's take our time, you know, saying these lines and uh, killing this guy. <laughs> Honestly, there's just like walk up to people and shoot them. I've lost, like, the body count's gotta be the hundreds by now. <laughs> Huh? That's not what's happening here. Mexicans, is that with three people? You Americans. <laughs> I can move this. You kill me with your stupid. Oh, well, you had to insult him. Oh my god, he's just emptying the gun. Bye! <laughs> Whoa, slips into this cave. Professor, where are you going? <laughs> the Africans say my daughter is in the shack. But where's the shack? <laughs> what? He's looking for a shack? Secure the vehicle. I'll take care of your daughter. Secure the vehicle. <laughs> just aimlessly running around in this like gunfire. And he's like, oh, the professor, you're so silly. This guy trying to find a shack. <laughs> and now it's over? What? Oh, they are my two uh, amigos. <laughs> they stole our vehicle and they uh, they almost run me over. But that is my daughter. Yeah, she's like, oh yeah, by the way, I lied. That dirty, no good son of a... And who are you guys? This is Michael Gold. See, si, Michael Gold. <laughs> Michael Gold. <Aww>. So... <laughs> Michael Gold. <laughs> Then where's his daughter? They're like, oh, actually, I've been here this whole time to try and save you. Of course, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. The story must continue. We need more of this. No! <laughs> what a cruel twist of fate. Oh. The bullets may not have killed them, but the fireball certainly will. Cheese and rice. Gold! Q giant explosion. Liebchen! My little Liebchen! <laughs> That's his actual daughter, I'm guessing. There we go. I want to thank you for all that you have done. A pleasure, sir. I shall see you again. <laughs> Not one laser! And now they're stealing your helicopter. Yeah, ha ha! Amigos, bye! What about Prentice and the other fellow? I think they can find their own transport. <laughs> He's still alive? Are you serious? You survived that fireball? Oh, well, they're gonna add running him over to the list. Come on, seriously? Oh, through a brick wall. Will that do it though? I don't know. Cheese and rice, this guy won't die. It's the Michael Myers of laser mission. 
They're like, oh, I'm so happy, Father Dollar Hog, if we just ran somebody over. You're looking at him. Oh my gosh. So it's my first time watching the 1989 film Laser Mission, despite there being zero lasers involved, which was very disappointing. I was looking forward to like a sci-fi element, some lasers, nothing. They talked about them. We never got to see any though. They were trying to, you know, save this professor who had a plan involving lasers and diamonds, but again, no actual lasers. Lots of other nonsense and no lasers. Brandon Lee was in this, who I mostly know from The Crow. I love loved him in The Crow. I thought he was great. I feel like he did his best in this movie. I don't feel like it was a good story. It wasn't a good script. There wasn't a lot to work with. I didn't recognize any of the other actors' names, so I feel like he did his best. I still think his best performance that I've seen so far is The Crow. I'm not sure why he decided to do this. I know this came out before The Crow, so maybe he's just trying to get experience. There was some stunts and stuff like that involved, so maybe that's why he decided to sign up for it. Comment below if you know how many of the stunts that he did or anything like that but yeah it was just so bad even his character wasn't very likable like he was this kind of like cheesy slimy you know spy I feel like this movie like put a bunch of plot points in a hat and just pulled them out and just resorted back to oh we don't know what to say well we'll just have an explosion we don't have actual time for character development we'll just say you know it's a long story we don't have time to you know further develop anything we'll just throw in a sex scene like they just fell back on the most convenient you know movie stereotypes basically when you don't have a solid story then character to actually fall into it's just distract them as much as possible and hope they don't notice the first half I was like okay like he's a spy and he's trying to you know get to this professor and then he meets the daughter or so we think it's the daughter and then you know there's very intense action sequences literally bodies everywhere he just killed everybody I don't even know what the body count would be by the end of this it's got to be in the hundreds or something crazy and then when they get to the desert I was like okay we've hit a wall like, are we supposed to believe they spent two, three days in the desert walking 400 miles and one day on a horse? Like, come on. It's just ridiculous. And yet somehow these assassins are still able to find them in the desert. Like, just so ridiculous. We didn't need to have that be like a 20 minute part of a movie. That was already only an hour and a half. It just completely put a standstill on any, you know, momentum the movie had. Mr. Gold, this Michael Gold character, was very dedicated to his spy, you know, career. He definitely had like the disguises and he's putting a different accents. And when he goes up to the you know Manuel and their troop and is like hitting them and taking their jeep and just slapping them and it's just like what is this scene like what is the point of this He's like where is their jeep there is no jeep and it's just like do you realize how ridiculous you are like I don't know if this was supposed to be a comedy it definitely was funny to me the fact that he's just like yelling insults and then steals their jeep and just telling them like there is no jeep there's nothing you don't know anything like where did you see me you didn't see me like what just you, you're an international spy and this is the budget they gave you like this is your resources is go steal somebody else's jeep they definitely played that same song at least five times throughout the movie and with that big saxophone solo and when we had that car chase scene that's what carried that car chase scene i don't know if they just copy and pasted the same instrumental parts or if that saxophone solo really is that long i've never heard that song before i don't know if it was written specifically for this movie but it was definitely super cheesy super 80s it was super ridiculous and the more they kept playing it the funnier it got and there was lots of just like 80s instrumental music in the background that I feel like you could get off a free stock music website. I don't feel like they had a high budget for this. I feel like any budget they had probably went to Brandon Lee or I hope that's where it went because it definitely wasn't anything else. There were so many different countries mentioned and the first half just felt so frantic where you're like you're in prison now you're back in the US and then you're finding the daughter and then you're over here and over there and it just felt like they didn't know where to go so they're like if we just keep momentum going no one will realize we don't have a plan let's have a big car chase sequence let's have her knock doors off other cars let's drive around the pier let's have a car drive over there and explode and just just chaos just pure chaos but at least it was entertaining like i said and then when we got to the desert everything slowed down and you're just like okay 
Now the two of you alone have to carry this movie with your badly written dialogue. And Alyssa's character wasn't actually the professor's daughter. She was this spy that was sent in to make sure that he completed the job. It just, it felt unnecessary. And I definitely feel like her character was just there because they wanted to have like a female co-star basically. From a production standpoint, I mean, I'm not gonna get too into it, but there was definitely some bad audio where music was way too loud or dialogue was way too loud. And some of the phrases framing shots like when they're in the desert and they're fighting. Why did they put the camera under the horse so we could see the shot between the horse's legs and why did we need that in the foreground? What was that? How was that helping us telling the story? And it was cutting off the top of their heads. Like it's a fight sequence. I want to see the action. Like what are you doing? Just so ridiculous. And the fact that they, you know, were going to guillotine him at the beginning because he was convicted of treason somehow. All of these things that just felt like, oh, we don't know what to do. Just pull something out of the air and we'll make it work and it doesn't. Definitely some badly written one-liners and I didn't even, you know, use my usual bonktum and, you know, because it was just every five seconds there was a fight scene and it's just so ridiculous. So badly choreographed. They're like rolling around trying to get this diamond and you could tell like when they punch that they're missing and missing by a lot. Like it was just, if you love ridiculous movies, this is definitely for you. It's just nonsense from start to finish. And that guy at the end who wouldn't die like we literally saw an explosion happen like 10 feet behind him and somehow he comes out and he's okay like the bulletproof vest part we're like okay you get one more life but the fireball how does he survive that and then they just as a way to end up the film just everybody jumps in the jeep and they just drive him into a brick wall and they're like oh dad i'm so glad you're okay like ha 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 such a light-hearted day like what what is happening? And even that scene where they're driving in their bus and then it explodes. We definitely see a shot of flames coming out of the windows. The whole bus is completely engulfed in fire. It's not like they, you know, threw a little fireball at it and you're like, okay, the tire's starting. They better get out now. No, there was no warning. It was complete explosion. And then the next shot is them running through the desert. And I'm like, come on, like, you have to at least take the audience, you know, to the edge of their seat and then bring them back. Not have it just so ridiculous where we know that they wouldn't have ever made it up. The movie would have ended right there. The KGB were involved. The guy from Austria, Eckhart, was involved. Like, it just felt like so many different pieces were around. It's just like, why are you adding all these elements? You're just overcomplicating it. And they're like, okay, well, we need to go see this professor. Okay, that professor professor's dead. Okay, now we need to go do this. It was just, I know they were trying to make it cohesive and like they were trying to, you know, solve this problem, but it just came out such a jumbled, jumbled mess. And the fact that Michael Gold was shot in the stomach and then is walking around like everything's fine. Like there's like a little bit of blood and then he's just walking around shooting people and continuing to fight and driving, like getting in the Jeep and doing all these things. It was like, you would be bleeding significantly. You were shot in the stomach. Like what is happening? They just took away all the risk and all the danger for these characters that are spies like that's a cool job they're supposed to be you know in these dangerous situations the audience is supposed to be worried about their safety not having them be you know so ridiculously removed from the situation where it's just laughable now i'm terrified to ask if there are sequels or remakes or anything like that at the end michael was like to the professor i'll see you later he's like why why do you need to see him again what are you continuing on like now you have the diamond i guess but like now you're gonna you know help him create nuclear weapons like what that seems like a bit of a career change but yeah comment below if there are sequels or remakes and if i should watch them i hope not i hope nothing else came from this overall i thought it was super ridiculous nonsense from start to finish overdone action sequences, bad lines, Brandon Lee trying his best to save this, just complete nonsense and chaos and zero lasers, which I think is the real letdown of this entire movie. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Those aren't lasers. No need to talk. Just throws his passport. Oh, that saxophone! Guillotine! They're not even going for hanging. Now the KGB's involved? Bing. They love their jeeps and they love to slap people. None of these conversations make any sense. Just build the Cuban government. This disguise. He loves his disguises. Just this wall of heads and jars. They're gonna walk 400 miles.